Hello everyone and welcome to what is going to be a bit of an unusual video for us um, because we're going to be making a bit of unusual videos going forward. Uh, the TLDR of it, for anybody who doesn't want to watch the full explanation, is we're going to be switching uh, from streaming League of Legends content to now making Hearthstone content. And uh, I'm going to explain the full reason for this and uh, show you guys a couple of things. Um, that led me to this conclusion just so you guys understand and I wanted to take the time to make this video because I, I know that most of my viewership are people that I met with playing League of Legends in the ranked games as we climbed our way up this season uh, from uh, bronze one to uh, we topped out of the top 16th percentile uh, at that time. So that's, that was pretty good, um, considering I don't think I've ever broke like the top 60th percentile, <laughs> or at least thereabouts. Um, it was quite an improvement for me as a player this year, and that's those numbers are like from the entire end of the season. This is like midway through the season, and we'd already hit top 16%, so I was very impressed with myself, um, very happy to, about that, and wanted to continue improving as a player and um, a couple of things happened, and I want to take the time to explain that to you guys. So first, I want to show you what our schedule was for the majority of the year. Now, this is the schedule we had even before uh, we started streaming, because uh, setting up the stream, because we have a three-point lighting system, a green screen where we key it out so we can get a face rig, like a virtual avatar of ourselves on that side of the camera, on that side of the stream. Um, so a lot of work goes into the technical end of this behind the scenes that you guys don't see, which ho hopefully you guys shouldn't see. <laughs> but um, so that delayed actually starting the stream a little while. Um, and, but just to make sure that I had myself in a good like rhythm and good schedule for when the stream actually went live, I already was doing these hours above uh, even before the stream went live uh, for the very first time. So I've been doing this pretty much all year. And simultaneously, I've been working. <laughs> right so that already is a lot um and you know it doesn't always work out to where i can maintain these hours eight days or eight hours a day four days a week of just playing the game also then edit that video which i'm not like a professional video editor i'm learning this from scratch this year um so that's, that's been a fun challenge and I like doing that, but it's definitely not something that's like that for me. Also streaming, this is the first time I've ever streamed. I, I technically have streamed before, but not at this level. <laughs> um, so all those technical challenges are new, all the stuff behind the scenes that delays the stream starting almost every day <laughs> by like 15 minutes. Um, it's all challenges for me and I like that challenge. Um, a lot of the context I want to give too for this is talking about how I enjoy challenges. I and come back to my face for this, come away from the schedule. So one of the games I grew up playing was Civilization 4. Um, and I'm not that young to where I like, grew up playing Civ 4, but <laughs> that's, that's one of the games that really stuck with me and I played countless hours at more than I probably will log with any other game in my life. Um, maybe like games I stream would be an exception. But even maybe not with that. <laughs> and there was a, all the expansions that came out to Civ 4. The first one was called Warlords. And in that, they had a mod that came out where you could play as like Earth at 1000 AD, where the Crusades were starting, the Inquisition was starting in Spain. And you could play as the Arabian Empire at the time, who was just like got declared holy war on. All of the developed countries in the West were developed at the time, <laughs> for the time were attacking you, they had just like invaded, you were super spread out, didn't have very good infrastructure, so it was really hard to defend, and then like everybody hated you because you played on, it defaulted to the hardest difficulty level of deity, and like I would throw the additional like pain on top of that of uh, enabling permanent alliances, so like my enemies would very frequently ally a lot faster than they should, and no one would ever ally with me <laughs> because of, they hated me because of the diplomatic uh, like negatives I got for playing on that difficulty level. So I set myself up for the hardest challenge possible and I played that game over and over and over and I lost over and over and over until I had to figure out 
the exact very careful sequence of how to like get through the early game, spike properly in the mid game, and then be able to drive it home and win that game. And that's incredibly hard. And I like taking on challenges like that. I like having to figure out how to analytically solve these problems. Something is asking me a question, how do you beat this game? Giving these initial conditions. I like finding the answer to that question. That is the kind of gamer I am. And League of Legends asks questions, but it doesn't quite ask the same kind of questions. It doesn't ask, here's a situation with these initial conditions. Figure out a solution to this like puzzle, basically. Um, League of Legends is more of a game that's about real-time judgment and like reaction. It's very much more like a first-person shooter in that sense of a first-person shooter isn't necessarily like, hey, do you think that you can use an AK in a more macro powerful way than a sniper? Like that's not a sniper rifle, that's not a thing. <laughs> that's a, maybe there's some high level thinking in like a composition to a multi-man team of what guns you pick, but there's not like, it would be imbalanced to say on a macro level, this gun is better. So like there's, there's not that complexity there. The complexity in first person shooter games, which I've never been good at, <laughs> and never even really enjoyed all that much, to be honest. Um, I, I enjoy them, but not like I love certain games. Um, first person shooters, the complexity comes in from being able to react to situations change. Somebody pops out of the corner, boom, twitch reflex to shoot and get a headshot. Um, being able to uh, see as your team moves, and adjust to how your team moves to move yourself properly so you don't get out of position just because your team was pushing forward. Um, League of Legends in that vein is a very similar game. It's about reaction time. So there may be an optimal play to take a certain objective on that, be it Baron or Dragon or uh, Drake or uh, a tower or an inhibitor or push to win. But if you are the only one going for that play and the rest of your team is doing a suboptimal play, that suboptimal play becomes the optimal play because if you go it alone, you're going to die and then your team's going to be in a 4v5 and then you don't even get the suboptimal play. So it creates a new challenge. It's saying how do you interact with people in a disorganized fashion if you're not playing actual team and you're on comms and trying to play at a professional level, <laughs> um, which we weren't. We were just playing solo queue uh, with random people we got queued up with. So how do you solve that problem? How do you react? And you have to train yourself to be always on edge um, and always have like the best judgment to analyze a situation or read a situation and immediately react. And I've never been a reactive gamer. I've been an analytical gamer. I hit pause and think, how can I play this right? What do I need to do in the next 10 seconds to make this work? And unpause. And then after I play those 10 seconds, pause again. Okay, what's the next thing I need to do? <laughs> and for games like Civ that are turn-based, I would, I would really analyze every turn. I would go back and I would look at all the different cities. I would look at the future tech path, consider the additional construction options I have. Every turn I would reanalyze. And that takes, I was notoriously amongst my friends that played Civ, which wasn't many. <laughs> um, I was notoriously the person who took the longest to make it an actual turn go through once the game got big enough to where there was a lot of stuff to review. I would take forever to move. And I would argue that I always, because of that, moved in the most optimal way. <laughs> but uh, I would take quite a long time. And League of Legends doesn't afford you that luxury. Because League of Legends is about testing that aspect of yourself as a gamer. How quickly can you make snap judgments? And that's great. And I love that, and that's why I've played League so hard. That's why I've had this schedule this entire year for, like, now it's already over half the year. We're, like, halfway through June now. Um, and I've been doing this since before January, um, towards the end of, like, the even in the preseason, I started doing this last year, um, so in, like, December or whatever. So I put in a lot of time with League. And I want it to be clear that it's not like, oh, I've gotten fed up with the game. I love League. League is like the, the artistic expression in League of all the characters, of the world, of the lore. I just, I love it. I love it. It's, it's wonderful. It's, it is my artistic niche of choice, um, which is why I played it this much. 
and at the same time, and we've been playing this schedule, we've been, uh, we were actually going to wind down the schedule a little bit to do two days a week instead, excuse me, to do just Monday and Friday, and still do the same hours, but that would give us the other two days to uh, edit the videos and like prep the stream and like try and work out the buggy details and also to develop new materials like we made snazzy intros and outros for our videos, uh, different ones for highlights, different ones for uh, like lessons and we could start structuring lessons more, we could watch more pro games in our time off so we can maybe you know, on stream like review a pro game and do a lesson on like what the pros did or like even a segment of what the pros did and that's all well and good. But that gave me so much less time playing the game, I felt like I was really decaying as a player because I wasn't getting enough hours in. And unfortunately, the reality of it is I don't like have a gigantic stream. That, and this isn't like pressuring people to be like, make my stream gigantic. This is just the reality of the situation is I can't put any more time into League than I was already doing. And sure, I was improving a lot, and I know how I could have improved more. I could have just played one character, or at least just played one role, which I was always playing every role, which is terrible if you want to get better at the game um, and improve your rank. It's the hardest path to choose, which is, of course, why I chose it. I always choose the hardest path forward um, to really push myself. Um, and once I picked one character and played one character and one role a lot and got really good at that character and then felt like I was stuck, then I could get like a coach um, a coaching lesson from uh, somebody who's in like Masters or Challenger, or at least High Diamond, and actually pay for a coaching session and figure out, okay, what are the elements I need to focus on? What do I need to do better? How do I need to train my thinking to change, to improve at the game? And that's how I would improve. That's how I would get better at the game. And that would be great. And I would love to do that. But at the same time, I want to make sure that I'm producing good content. Because something that I didn't initially expect coming in um, was how much I was doing this to just make the content as well. It's not just I wanted an excuse to play League a whole bunch, which of course was, is nice. I love playing League. An excuse I can get to hop on League, I will take. Um, that is a deal I will take, to quote Tommy Kench. Um, but at the same time, if it's... It, I have discovered that I enjoy making the content a lot. And one, if comparatively speaking, even though I maxed out at my peak at league at the top 16th percentile, even though I think that's pretty decent, league is hyper competitive, so people will poo poo that, but I think that's pretty good, <laughs> especially considering where I was coming from before. Uh, I think that speaks a lot of my potential to go even higher. I really liked making the content a lot. And if I, if I can't make the content optimal, optimally, like that's the thing that bugs me. It's not like, oh, I'm not climbing at league anymore. I'm not improving my rank. What bugs me is like, I feel like I'm not making applicable content because like I have such a high like gap in skill between people who like I are also streamers. I know that I watch. Um, and it wasn't something that was that big of a deal until it really hit me this month where I was just, I always screw around on Hearthstone because I play Hearthstone in the background. Um, but because I was winding back the schedule and was focusing more on editing the content and like trying to edit videos together, I had more time to just like play Hearthstone in the background while I was doing stuff on another screen. <laughs> and I haven't been playing Hearthstone on stream at all, and I've still been working, so like I haven't had time to actually play Hearthstone. Like I've played the game, but not really like played the game, if you know what I mean. And even though I haven't, like I want to show you guys that currently I'm in the top one percent of Hearthstone players this season, and that's insane to me. I don't know how I could be so much better at Hearthstone than I am at League. And what, again, is bothering me with that is more that if I'm going to put all this time and energy into 
making a stream that is not just a stream for like, hey, let's have fun and derp around on League of Legends and play like meme things and do fun compositions. If I'm trying to improve myself, not just for the sake of improving myself, but for also building a legacy of content so people watching can also improve their gameplay. Like that's what kind of grabs me and like urges me to stream. Oh, I've had this open for a little while, but you guys saw it. <laughs> Anyways, that's what grabs me and motivates me to stream. And if I'm at, if I'm not even like seriously playing the game and I'm in the top 1% of players, like, why is that? And I think it goes back to what we talked about earlier, what kind of, like, gamer I am. I am the stop, take a deep breath, analyze, think, pick the strategy that's optimal, and then execute. That's the kind of gamer I am. And I think that Hearthstone, even if I applied this kind of schedule to Hearthstone, I, th I know I would be way better at Hearthstone than I am now. I, I don't feel like I'm that great of a Hearthstone player right now. Yet again, in the same breath, we, we just saw I'm currently in the top 1% of Hearthstone players. And I think that's at least regionally for North America. But I'm pretty sure my league rank was just for North America too. So if I'm making, if, if one of my main motivations for the stream is the enjoyment of making content that can help people improve at the game, because I understand the game at a pretty high level and can help break it down to people who are like newer to the game or um, haven't thought of the game in a certain way before, so they've been struggling at like certain concepts. It makes my content a lot better if I'm more proficient at what I'm teaching. Obviously, I think that makes sense to anybody. Um, and I like playing Hearthstone. That's why I derp around on it all the time and why I've derped around on it enough this month to place into the top 1% <laughs> of players um, on ladder. And if I'm just screwing around on Hearthstone mostly and can make that rank, and my motivation for streaming is to make content not necessarily for one particular game, but to make content that like teaches people how to game better. I think I should really focus on making the kind of content that is like that I am the best at making. Um, which, if I am better at one game, whether it be Hearthstone or League, I should probably make content for the game I'm better at because that will be more useful to more people instead of just hanging out and being like, "Hey, here's lessons that maybe like." I don't know, a, a lot of people could learn from the League of Legends lessons because I'm in the, I peaked at the top 16th percent. So that's a lot of people who play League <laughs> um, beneath me. But nonetheless, it's not, it's not anywhere near being the top 1% at League of Legends. But if I am hitting that at Hearthstone, and if I really improve myself at Hearthstone with the same kind of like regimen, I was like doing drills at League of Legends. I was doing the lessons every day where I watched my videos and broke down how I could have played better moment by moment, like hitting that pause button in the replay. Um, and like drawing on screen with my, you guys know my draw tool and everything. So if I put that kind of like analysis and effort into Hearthstone, I think I can be a way better Hearthstone player than I am now. And if I'm already in the top 1%, that means I can actually be somebody who gives, who knows the game at such a high level that they could make a really good quality content to teach people how to improve at the game. So that's my thinking. Um, and I don't know if that like sounds like it makes sense to you guys, um, but I, again, I just wanted to make this video to give you that context because I know that most of um, uh, my viewers are people I met playing League of Legends, and I didn't want people to feel weirded out by like, all you've ever done is League, why are you not doing League? That's like, I feel almost betrayed that you're doing a different game now. <laughs> Any sort of weird feelings like that, I just wanted to fully flush out for anyone who's concerned um, or like just confused um, why it is I'm switching from League of Legends to Hearthstone. Uh, as my focus for the game I'm streaming. It's not all because I'm mad at Riot or like don't like League anymore or just like gave up on League is too hard. Like I love the challenge League provides. I will probably still stream myself playing League off and on again because I just love that game so much. 
Uh, however, again, since I I think the aspect that I love most about streaming is being able to try and teach the game as I play it. I think Hearthstone both has a better environment for that because I can stop and explain what I'm doing move by move and not have to play in real time as I explain in real time. Um, which also means I neglect chat and it's hard to like interact with you guys that way. But also I just think I can be better at Hearthstone and thus be better at teaching people Hearthstone. So I think we're going to switch over and be a Hearthstone show <laughs> instead. And uh, we're probably going to have to take some uh, short hiatus away uh, just to revamp all of our content. Because like all of our, like even our um, like show over like break so I can walk my dog <laughs> um, to be right back. All this stuff is like League of Legends themed. Those are all like characters we can play in League. So I I need to revamp all that stuff to be like Hearthstone themed instead. Um, so we're going to probably go on a brief hiatus to revamp the stream, get ourselves the right assets made to where we can uh, be a nice little Hearthstone show. And hopefully, you know, I know a lot of people who play League of Legends also play Hearthstone just because they can have Hearthstone open while they're queuing into a game of League, play one game of Hearthstone, and then they'll be in-game for League. So hopefully some of you guys who, uh, like, started watching the stream because uh, we do League of Legends will still hang out. If not, totally understand. Don't feel obligated to keep watching at all. I would understand if somebody, like I said earlier, I don't play... I'm not big on FPS <laughs> because of the same kind of logic train. Um, and if somebody I knew who was streaming uh, swapped over to like CSGO, it would, I might still watch, but it w I would have to like really enjoy watching that person in particular because I'm just not really interested in that kind of game. So if you're in that situation, don't feel obligated to hang out um, if you don't want to, but I appreciate you guys all hanging out. We made it to 50 subs. Uh, or excuse me, 50 followers. So I'm going to give a shout out video here, um, probably before we actually start doing the Hearthstone streams, because again, I got to make the assets. Um, well, I'll make a nice little shout out video to everybody uh, who got us to 50 followers. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's a big milestone for Twitch streams. Um, so if you, if you enjoy Hearthstone and you want to hang out and see us play a little bit of Hearthstone, see one of the players who's in the top 1% apparently, um, get a lot better at the game and learn a lot about how to play the game at a much more deeper level, uh, then hang out. And hopefully we can make some really compelling content for you guys about Hearthstone and uh, how to think about cards and um, how to think about certain plays you can make, how to think about deck construction. Hopefully all that uh, is up your guys' alley and you will enjoy watching that. And thank you, even if not, thank you for hanging out. It's been really fun, I know. Some people have said like this is their favorite stream on Twitch. That's really incredibly nice of you guys. I love you guys so much. Thank you for that. Um, and I hope that I can I hope that I can maintain that level of uh, quality for you guys in switching over to another game. Uh, whether or not you hung out or whether or not you hang out for that, thank you for being here and making streaming so fun. I really loved interacting with you guys and. You know, it, even if you bail now, again, no hard feelings. I totally get it. It's been really fun having you guys here, and thank you. I, I know that League of Legends is notorious for having a really toxic community, blah, blah, blah. But I don't, I don't actually buy into that because most of the people I play with on League have been really awesome people like you guys, and I've really enjoyed interacting with you guys in the broader League community <laughs> in this way. Um, so thank you again. Um, I hope to hang out with you guys uh, and still play League of Legends on stream occasionally. Um, so if you guys want to hang out and still catch a couple League games here and there, for sure, I, I'll be happy to hop on and play a game with you guys um, as like a specialty thing at the end of the day or something if you guys want to do that. Um, so just let me know. Uh, certainly not opposed to playing League of Legends in the future, but we are going to be switching to being a main uh, Hearthstone focused show, creating a lot of Hearthstone content. So just a heads up on that. Hopefully that explanation gives you guys the content if you wanted it. Uh, if not, you probably already tuned out at the TLDR section. <laughs> but uh, let me know in the comments if you guys are okay with this, if you guys have any suggestions on how to transition, if you guys want to see it, me like still do like a, a game of League of Legends at the end of the day to round out the day, or you guys want to see me do like one full day of League of Legends a week still. 
let me know and uh, I might tailor the plan to what you guys want if you guys are really that interested in uh, going a certain way. So definitely let me know. I'm flexible as we reset the schedule and as we develop these assets again, I'll be on a brief hiatus. Thank you guys for making the stream a blast. It, it has been a blast and it's going to continue to be a blast. It's just going to be a Hearthstone blast instead. <laughs> so I'll see you guys next time as always. Thanks for hanging out. Love you guys.